even talk about me getting into college. You know, I busted my ass to get into college. My family came from nothing. My dad didn't even graduate high school. And his dream, grew up inner city, and his dream for me was to get into a school like Notre Dame. So he busted his ass. He's standing right back there. He busted his ass so that I could be in this position and I could work my ass off. So I wasn't a legacy. I earned my way and I paid my way into Notre Dame, just like everybody else. So me trying to educate myself and achieve a family dream, I, how is that something to talk down upon? That's the American dream is trying to break the cycle. And to be the first one in my family to go into college, that, that was a dream come true. And I'm trying to continue that road of just lifting up my family. So if, if he wants to make fun of that, then <laughs> go for it. You come from collegiate uh, boxing, you all the other sports that he named, Subway commercial that a lot of people don't know. A lot of people don't even know who you are as a boxer. To the fans that are gonna be tuning in, what can they expect to see of you and what 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 can you show the fans who you are? Well, I think I'm the person that I've been talking about at this press conferences and everything. I'm someone that takes this extremely seriously. I'm in the gym every single day working on my craft. I'm an athlete, I'm strong, I'm a power puncher. When I hit you, I hurt you. And I think the fans are gonna see that. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Are you still signed top rank? No. How did that dissolve? So are you now signed with PBC? Yeah, so we we have been a free agent for almost two years now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. How so that when this, so when this conversation came up through my lawyer Mike Grail talking with uh, Al Heyman and uh, Louis DeCubis, um, that's kind of who orchestrated this the PBC and everything. I said absolutely. So I was a free agent at the time and I was world ranked, so it was a perfect. If you don't mind sharing about the dissolve the top rank, how did that come about? Um, I mean, you know how the business is, man. Um, I, I got some guys over there I really like. Bob Aaron was good to me. Uh, Carl Moretti was really good to me, for sure. So, you know how it is. I mean, first of all, when I really dissolved from them, that's when I got sick. And um, I was getting so so sick and we couldn't figure out until I finally got diagnosed with that autoimmune disease in 2013 what was going on. So, my contract kind of expired and I didn't even know if I would fight again. I mean, doctors were telling me I'd never fight again. We were going from hospital to hospital all over. So, I think it just kind of naturally dissolved. And, Obviously, you know how boxing is. It's like, good. but I have nothing bad to say about top rank. To be honest, they, they were great. They brought me up. They got me to 12 and 0. Um, it was a really fun ride. I got to fight on some huge undercards, man. I got to fight in Madison Square Garden, Cowboy Stadium. Uh, got to fight an HBO undercard, Chavez Martinez. Uh, so I've been around these big stages, and I'm grateful for top rank and Bobby. So, so you know the world's weights real well, then. You fought on Manny Pacquiao's undercard, yeah, yeah. In Cowboy I, Stadium. I fought in Manny a lot of Manny's yeah. cards um, in Vegas about six or seven times. So, he's a rock star, man. I love Manny Pacquiao. Who wins? Keith Thurman? <laughs> right after I said that. I know, I got to, to. You led me to I it. I know, you led me to it. I'm about to, <laughs> I might backpedal. I, Manny's looks phenomenal. I think that he's gotten better and better. It's no doubt about that. But Keith Thurman's an incredible boxer, too. And he can hit hard. Um, I don't know who wins this. I wouldn't want to put money on it. And I know that sounds like a politician's answer, but I see that as a 50-50 fight, man. Because um, Manny's fast, but Keith's got that power, and so they're both really elite fighters. I mean, fans win that one. I, I couldn't call it. Now you're going down to 168. Do you plan on staying down at 168 once you win the title? Yeah, absolutely. So, so, so you think 168 is will be fairly? Not, I want the I biggest. Say easy, but I want the biggest fights. So to be honest, when when I think about that, the biggest fights are defending that belt or whatever it is, then no problem staying 65 or 68. But if 75 has to hire uh, fights for me, you know, like Chavez Jr., we were trying to get that fight for a long time. Who knows what weight that dude fights at now? Um, you know, maybe I got to fight him at 200 pounds. Maybe, I, I, I don't know. But 235. 235. That'd be nice, because then I can eat as much Chipotle as I want. <laughs> or Subway. Yeah, or Subway. Yeah, yeah. Well, I might have just gotten in trouble. Uh, uh, yeah, man, but... So, yeah, I haven't really thought about it. All I'm focusing on until I 20th. Okay. That's a Do you think that um, uh, Plant is trying to psych himself up since there's really no animosity between you guys by him bringing in the personal stuff, trying to psych himself up for that fight? Maybe. Like I said, I see that as insecurity, you know? I'm usually cool, calm, collected. And um, I was until he started talking, you know, about my personal life and whatnot. But that's what guys do, you know? I mean... You want to watch out for the most the quiet one in the room. They're the most dangerous, right? And a lot of guys talk a ton of mess so that they think they believe it themselves, you know? But it doesn't matter to me and all this stuff, you know, we'll go back and forth. At the end of the night, the bell rings, it's just us two. 
and no one's thinking about the talk and leading up to it, I promise you. All we're thinking about is 